video I'll be showing you how to crochet a bucket hat. This is an easy three-step pattern. We begin by crocheting the diameter of the crown, which is the top, then the crown height, and finally the brim. My head measures 22 inches. This is the average head size for a woman, so it'll definitely fit most of you. Supplies we need include the yarn. I'm using 24-7 Cotton by Lion brand. For this tutorial, I'm using the colorway Acru. I prefer the black version, but that's really hard to see on video. I needed just one skein for each of the hats that I made, but to be on the safe side, you should always buy an extra ball of the same lot number, just in case. You'll also need your crochet hook. I'm using a G, which is a six or a four millimeter, scissors, a blunt yarn needle, a stitch marker, which could also be a bobby pin if you choose, and then you'll also need a measuring tape or a ruler. So let's get started with the pattern. We begin with the magic circle. You start the magic circle by draping the tail end of the yarn over the backs of your fingers. And then you take the working yarn, which is the end that's attached to the skein, and you wrap that around your pointer and middle fingers, crossing the yarn over to create an X. Hold that X down with your thumb and then turn your hand over and drape the yarn across the tops of your fingers. Next, insert your hook under the yarn on the right hand side and then pull the yarn on the left underneath of that. Then you yarn over and chain one. If you haven't done that before or that was a little bit too fast for you, you can either slow down the playback settings or you can check out my magic circle video for a more in-depth tutorial. Take the tail end out of the middle of the magic ring and then we're gonna chain one again. So this brings us up to a height of chain two, which is the height of a half double crochet. And that's what we're going to be doing next. Round one is eight half double crochet into the ring. So this is our first half double crochet and what we're going to do is mark this stitch using a stitch marker. I always make sure to do this with the first stitch of every round because then it's really difficult to lose track of what you're doing. So there's my first stitch. We're gonna yarn over, insert the hook into the ring, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over and pull through three. That's our second. Yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. And that's our third. And then we're gonna keep going here until we have eight in total. If you need a refresher on how to do half double crochet, I of course have a full length video for that. Going into this pattern, I'd say that the two things that you really need to be comfortable with are making the magic circle and doing the half double crochet stitch. And if you've got those down, you should have no problem with this pattern. I'll be able to show you everything else in great detail. So we're coming up here on the eighth half double crochet, and then we're just gonna count again to make sure that we've got it right. You always wanna do that, especially at the beginning of your projects. So there's our stitch marker, that's our first stitch, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Okay, so now's the time to pull the tail end and really bring this round together. And we're gonna begin doing that by just pulling it out of the ring there. I want it to lie in between the working yarn and the ring, just like so. And now what I'm gonna do is pinch the stitch and then I'm gonna gently pull on the tail end just to bring everything together. And this is really the magic of this magic ring is that you're able to pull everything together in a way that doesn't leave a gap in the middle the way that beginning with a chain does. Okay, so now that we've got that done, I'm just gonna put the yarn back on my hook here and then remove the stitch marker. Round two is going to be an increase in each stitch around. And what that means is we're going to work two half double crochet in every stitch around. So there's our first half double crochet. And then, like I said, I always put the stitch marker in at the start of the round so that I'm able to more easily keep track of what I'm doing. And then now I'm going to do the second half double crochet in that same stitch space. And then I'm gonna do that again here in the next stitch. So here's my first half double crochet. 
and my second going into the same spot there. Okay, so I'm going to show you one more time for good measure. It's one half double crochet in the next stitch space. And then we're going to do one more half double crochet going into that same stitch space. All right, I'm going to let you guys work on your increases. Pause the video here and then I will meet you at the end of this round. When you do get to the end of this round, you should have 16 stitches. Now we are on to round three. So I'm going to remove my stitch marker and round three is going to be one half double crochet in the next stitch. So let's do that. And then of course I'm going to mark my stitch with a stitch marker. And then in the next stitch space, we're going to do an increase. So the goal here is to evenly increase until we have the right diameter for the crown. So there's our first and our second in the same stitch space, just like the last round. And then we're going to do one half double crochet in the next stitch and then an increase in the next stitch. Oops. Okay. And one more time, slow it down. We're going to do one half double crochet in the next stitch. And then in the following stitch, we're going to do two half double crochet. And guys, comment below and let me know if you'd like for me to show you a part of the pattern repeat slowed down, if that's helpful to you. I will definitely keep doing it. I can do it more. I can do it less. Just let me know if it's working for you. I want to make sure that I'm showing you in the best way possible. Something that I want to touch on briefly is that you may notice that we aren't slip stitching to join or chaining at the end of every round. This is probably different from some of the other crochet projects that you've worked on in the past. And that's because we're working this pattern in what is called the spiral method. What we're doing is keeping track of our rounds with a stitch marker. For a pattern like this, there's no reason to slip stitch to join and then begin by chaining because doing so would create a noticeable seam. So when we work with the spiral method, it's seamless, which is what we want here. Okay. So we're coming up on the end of this row. This is our last pattern repeat. So one half double crochet in the next and then an increase. And now that we've reached the end of this round, we should have 24 stitches. All right. So now we are on to round four. So let's take our stitch marker out and then we're going to work our first stitch, which is one half double crochet. Let's put our stitch marker back in. And then we're going to work another half double crochet in the next stitch. And then in the stitch after that, we're going to work an increase. So next repeat, we're going to do one half double crochet in the next stitch, one half double crochet in the next stitch. And then in the next stitch, that's going to be an increase. So the repeat again is one half double crochet in the next stitch. One half double crochet in the next stitch. And then an increase in the following stitch. So there's one and two half double crochet. 
And then just like with the last couple of rounds, we're going to repeat that same pattern until we get to the end of the round. When you get to the end of this round, you should have 32 stitches. So pause here and I will meet you back for round five. All right, so round five, let's take the stitch marker out and work our first stitch. It's going to be one half double crochet. And then we're going to mark our space. That's our first stitch we're marking. And then we're going to work a second half double crochet in the next stitch. And then in the next stitch, a half double crochet. In the following stitch, we're going to do an increase. So that's one half double crochet in each of the next three stitches. That's one, two, and then three. And then next we're going to do an increase. Okay, so this next time let's do it slow down. In the next stitch, we're going to do one half double crochet. And then we're going to move on to the next stitch space and do a half double crochet. And the next stitch space is going to be half double crochet. So that's a total of three individual half double crochets. And then we're going to work an increase in the next stitch space. So there's our first half double crochet and then the second in the same stitch space. And that is the pattern repeat for this round. Once you reach the end of round five, you're going to have a total of 40 stitches. So pause the video here and I will meet you back when you're done with round five. All right, on to round number six. So by now I'm sure you guys are starting to see the pattern emerge. We're just adding one more half double crochet in each round before we increase. So for round six, we're going to do four half double crochet and then an increase. There's my first half double crochet that I've marked with a stitch marker. Here's my second in the next stitch, third in the following stitch, fourth in the next stitch, and then in this stitch, the next stitch, I'm going to increase. So that's one half double crochet in each of the next four stitches. There's two, three, and four, and then we're going to do an increase. So again, that's one half double crochet in the next, one in the next, one in the next, one in the next, and then an increase in the following stitch. At the end of round six, you're going to have a total of 48 stitches. All right, so the pattern is going to carry on this way where with each subsequent round, we're doing one more half double crochet before we increase. So next I'm just going to put up the written pattern for round seven through 10. And again, we're just carrying on in the same way. If you have any questions about round seven through 10, please comment below and I will be more than happy to help you out. All right, so at this point you've finished round 10, you have a total of 80 stitches, and then now we're just going to measure the crown diameter. And the reason for this is to make sure that your gauge is correct. It's really important that this piece measure about six and a half inches. So you just measure straight across as evenly as you can. It is gonna to wanna to pull there on the end, so try to hold it close. You don't want it to pucker too far out. And then you can see there just straight across the middle, that's about six and a half inches. And this is the most important piece to fit in your hat. If you don't get this part right, the size of your hat is going to be different. So if you need to, if it's too small, you can add another row. If it's too large, you could take out a row. But if you've worked the pattern as I have it in the video, you shouldn't have any issues at all. 
The only reason it would be different is if you are crocheting really tightly or very loosely. All right, so that's it for the first part of this pattern. That's the crown diameter. And now we're gonna be working on the crown height. So to begin with round 11, we're going to do one half double crochet in the back loop only of every stitch. So the back loop is going to be the part of the V that V is the top of the stitch and it's going to be the part of the V that is furthest away from you. So we're going to do our first half double crochet just going into that back loop. You go in through the middle and then you push out on the side of the fabric that's away from you and complete your stitch as normal. We're still using our stitch marker to mark the first stitch of every round. And then in each stitch, we're going to work one half double crochet into the back loop only. So again, that's just working into the back loop only of every single stitch around. If it's helpful to you, I have a full length video going over the back loop only and the front loop only with really chunky yarn that's easy to see. If that might be helpful to you in seeing where you're meant to be working, if you've never worked in the back loop only before, if you're having difficulty seeing with the smaller yarn, I do have that option available to you. So what we're doing by working into the back loop only is we're creating a ridge in the fabric that's going to pull the stitches down. And this is going to make the structure of the hat. So we only need to do this once. We're just going to work this round in back loop only. I'm going to let you guys pause here and then meet me back when you're done with round 11. You'll still have 80 stitches. All right, so now we are done with round 11. And I just wanna show you here that you can see that the fabric has begun to work in a different direction. Working in the back loop only has pulled it away from the edge of the crown diameter, and now we're working on the length of the crown. So for rounds 12 through 22, they're really straightforward. We're just gonna be doing one half double crochet in each stitch around. The most difficult thing about working rounds 12 through 22 is keeping track of where you are. What I would recommend doing is leaving the stitch marker from the end of the first round there. And then as you continue to work on, just use a new stitch marker to mark the first stitch of every row. And then once you're, you've got some length going, you'll be able to see where the rounds are. It's really easy, the stitch definition with these stitches. You should just be able to count up, okay, round 12, 13, 14, 15, and so on. Uh, another way to do this, the way that I actually prefer to do this, is to just measure and make sure that the crown height is three and a half inches. All you need to do really is keep track of that first stitch, and then once you know you're roughly, okay, like this is about round 22, just measure and see if you need to do another round. So carry on working on your rounds and then I'll meet you back here at the end of round 22 and I will show you how to measure the crown height to make sure that you've got the right gauge. All right, so now we're done with round 22. I'm just showing you here that first round where I worked into the back loop only and that nice ridge that it created to make the fabric turn direction. And so now I'm just going to measure this area of fabric and make sure that it's three and a half inches. I'm using a gauge ruler, which I love. It's one of my favorite tools, but you can just use a tape measure if that's what you've got available to you. So that was three and a half inches. And now we're going to move on with round 23. So round 23 is the start of the brim. What we're going to be doing for this round is working into the front loop only. So that's the front loop only right there. It's the loop at the top of each stitch that's closest to you. And for the brim, we're going to be evenly working increases to have a nice flare uh, that doesn't have any ruffles in it. This isn't the kind of bucket hat where I've got ruffles in it, so it's just going to evenly flare out and evenly increase. And that means we need to do one half double crochet in each of the first four stitches. So there's three, 
And then we're going to do one more half double crochet in the next stitch. And then in the next stitch, we're going to increase. And then this is our pattern repeat for this row. So we're going to do one half double crochet in each of the next four stitches and then increase in the following stitch. So one, two, one in the next stitch for three, one in the next stitch for four, just making sure to work under the front loop only. And then in the following stitch, we're going to do an increase, still working under the front loop only. Okay, so let's look at that one more time. We're going to do one half double crochet in the next stitch, one half double crochet in the next stitch for two, one half double crochet in the next stitch, and that's three, one half double crochet in the next stitch, and that's four, and then we're going to increase. And this whole round, we're yet we're working under the front loop only. All right, so carry on with the pattern repeat. Uh, once you get to the end of the row, you're going to have 96 stitches. All right, so now we're on to round 24. So we're still increasing for this round. You can kind of see the brim getting started there. The back loop only is what's facing away on the inside of the fabric because we worked into the front loop only this time. That's creating a nice brim. So for round 24, we're going to do one half double crochet in each of the next five stitches. And you'll notice here we're just working our stitches as usual, not into the front or the back loop, just under both loops as normal. So that's two, three, four, five, and then we're going to increase in the next stitch. So that's our pattern repeat. We're going to do one half double crochet in each of the next five stitches, and then we're going to increase. Two, one in the next for three, one in the next for four, one in the next for five, and then an increase. We've got one in the next stitch, one in the next stitch for two, one in the next stitch for three, one in the next stitch for four, one half double crochet in the next stitch for five, and then an increase. Okay guys, so finish round 24. When you're all done with round 24, you'll have 112 stitches. All right, on to round 25. You can see the brims really getting going here. I'm going to do one more round of increases and then we'll be done increasing for the whole project. So round 25 is one half double crochet in each of the next six stitches and then an increase. So there's our first stitch. We're going to do one half double crochet in the next for two, one in the next for three, one in the next for four, one half double crochet in the next for five, one in the next for six, and then an increase. So again, you can see the pattern here emerging about how to evenly increase with projects in the round. You just do one more stitch with each subsequent round before increasing. Okay, so work up round 25. Again, it's one half double crochet in each of the next six stitches, and then you work an increase in the following stitch, and then repeat that all the way around. When you get to the end of this round, you will have 128 stitches. Okay, so now we're done with increasing for the brim. You can see it's a super cute short brim here. If you put it on at this stage to like try it out, it's going to look a lot like a, like a 20s hat. It's really funny. 
Okay, so for rounds 26 through 29, you're going to do one half double crochet in each round. As a matter of fact, for round 30, you're going to do one half double crochet in each round. That's our final round. So focus on doing one half double crochet in each round until you get to the end of round 30, and then I'll show you how to wrap it up. I'm also going to show you how to measure the brim so that it looks like it does in the photos that I've taken. Now obviously this is an optional thing. If you want a longer brim, just keep going until it's the length that you want. Uh, what I'm going to be showing you, what I'm going to be measuring now is the length that I have for the hats that I made and for the hats that are in the pictures that you see. But again, if you prefer it to be a little different, at this point it's up to you how long the brim is. So you should be trying it on, seeing how you like it, where do you want it to lay? Do you want it to go over your eyes? Do you want to be able to like lift it up in the front, um, sort of fold it over? Uh, do you want it to just like hit at your eyebrow level? It's totally personal up to you and it's going to vary how it looks on you depending on the length of your face, which is going to be probably different than mine. So try it on, keep making sure it's the way that you want it. And then here in a second, I will show you how to measure so that it is the length that I have it. Another thing you're probably noticing at this point is that we are getting close to the end of the first ball of yarn. So if you make your hat the way that I have it, you should have just enough yarn. I was playing a bit of yarn chicken. I ended with probably a few yards left over. Um, so if you end up wanting it longer, that's where that second ball of yarn comes in because you can create a longer brim without worrying. Um, if you end up not needing that extra ball of yarn, just go ahead and return it or keep it and make a big old yarn stash like I have going. In my opinion, it's just always so much better to have an extra ball of yarn in the same lot number, one over what you think you'll need. That way, if you do end up needing it, you're able to find the yarn. It's so heartbreaking to need more yarn and not be able to find the same color and the same lot number again. Such a bummer because it definitely will noticeably be a slightly different color. I did that one time I needed more yarn and I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to have to use a different lot number. And it was a pretty noticeable difference. So again, we're working one half double crochet in each round until you get close to the end of round 30. Once you are near the end of round 30, meet me back here and I will show you how to measure the brim and then also how to finish the project up. Okay, so now we've just got a few stitches left. You can see the hats really come together here. This is it, we're on the last round. What I'm going to do first is show you how to measure. So I'm gonna grab my gauge ruler again. You can use a ruler, any ruler you have is fine. And then I'm just putting it right up to where the brim starts to come out. And we're looking for two and five eighths of an inch. I know that seems really specific, but it's just what worked for me. And again, that's what we're looking for at the end of round 30. So I'm just going to finish wrapping up. We've done one half double crochet in each stitch around. I'm going to carry on till I get to my stitch marker, which would be the start of the next round. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it and then I'm going to slip stitch in that first stitch to join. Working under both loops, of course and then catching the yarn, pulling through, and then pulling through. Okay, so at this point you just wanna fasten off, cut yourself a tail there, and then pull it through. And then at this point you would weave in your ends, and then your hat is all done. And this acre color, it looks like a Van Gogh hat. This would not work with my hair color. I feel like if you were blonde though, this would look really fabulous on you. For me, I think the black just works best because my hair is really dark brown but whatever works for you. I could see this looking cute in almost any color. Okay guys, that's it for the bucket hat pattern. If you have any questions, please comment below and I'll do my best to help you out. If you like this pattern, please like and subscribe. If you end up making it, definitely tag me on social media because I absolutely wanna see your pretty self in this hat. And if you have any requests for patterns or tutorials that you'd like to see me make a video for, please comment below. See you all in the next video.